So as Siegfried announced, I would uh, like to present our method for impact assessment that we developed uh, for the CHIDE project. And um, a short uh, overview about my talk. Um, first, I would like to explain a bit of, of the background. Why do we develop an impact assessment method within TIDE? And uh, then I would highlight a few key characteristics of the method. And then I will go to each of the different steps. In total, we have eight steps. And I will um, give uh, some information on each step. And in the end, a short summary. So um, similar to the presentation yesterday, there will be a handbook where you can find all the details, which will be published um, in spring next year on the TIDE website. So it's just the presentation today is just a first introduction for you. <clears throat> So um, what was the idea behind um, this um, impact assessment method? Of course, um, the local authorities need guidance on the costs and potential benefits um, and the overall impacts of a measure, including potential side effects or other synergies and co-benefits. And um, currently, um, in transport project appraisal, different tools exist. And um, for instance, one tool is the cost-benefit analysis, or CBA, which is about um, giving a monetary, a monetary value to each of the effects. So if you have a reduction in air pollution, give a monetary value to that. And if you have some travel time savings, it gets also a monetary value. And then you can compare the costs and the benefits. <clears throat> And um, this is done mainly for large infrastructure projects. And um, another approach is the multi-criteria analysis, which is more based on qualitative criteria and on a scoring and rating process to compare different options. <clears throat> so um, besides an um, extensive literature review, we uh, ask the tied uh, leading cities and champion cities about their current practices regarding uh, the appraisal of transport projects. And um, just to give you some impressions, it's not really um, covering all cities, but just some impressions. Many cities answer they, that they do financial viability checks um, for important projects, but not CBA. So these financial viability checks will not cover all the benefits and costs of the projects, not the external ones. Like uh, yesterday, it was highlighted the difference between the economic factors and just the financial part of it. <clears throat> and uh, many cities also answered that, it, that they do not have a standard appraisal method for transport projects. And, um, but there were also other cities, for instance, in the UK, they have this um, web tag uh, tool or guidelines uh, developed by the uh, UK Department of Transports, and that include also a cost-benefit analysis. So the practices really vary among the tight cities. And uh, then we also ask about their opinion on cost-benefit analysis, and this is really suitable to assess um, the measures with uh, the cost-benefit approach. And uh, the cities answered um, or well, many of the cities answered that the major challenge is data availability because you need to quantify all effects and then give a monetary value. So that is a big uh, issue and sometimes you don't have all the data you need. <clears throat> and uh, another answer that we got uh, several times is that a regular CBA usually ignores advanced benefits to a measure because you cannot measure all effects. <clears throat> and another challenge is really to monetize um, qualitative externalities and not clear impacts. <clears throat> so based on, on the questionnaire among the cities and on the literature review, we decided, okay, what we really need for TIDE is a simple tool that can be really applied by the cities for impact assessment and that also fits a variety of tight measures because we have quite large measures like the pricing measures and then rather small measures and um, also different effects and objectives of these measures. So it was also important for us that um, the tool considers quantified and qualitative effects. And so um, we decided um, 
to mainly uh, combine the aspects of multi-criteria analysis thank you, um, and cost-benefit analysis, uh, while we put a focus on multi-criteria analysis. And um, so um, with this tight impact assessment methods, the city can also in advance look, okay, we will maybe want to implement this measure, what kind of effects we can expect. <clears throat> And so we also um, decided that the complexible um, needs to be adaptable to the proposed measure, measure size. For instance, in terms of budget, if you have a measure that costs a lot, you can put some, some money into the evaluations, but you have, if you have a low cost measure, the evaluation should not be too expensive, of course. <clears throat> and also it should be flexible compared to the, uh, regarding the data available. <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, the tight impact assessment methods includes effects that can be quantified as well as qualitative effects. And um, a main characteristic is that um, it allows you to visualize economic, social, and environmental effects of a measure. And uh, regarding the cost-benefit aspects, we thought that um, the calculation of economic viability indicators as a benefit to cost ratio or net present value, which are the key indicators in a cost benefit analysis which compare the benefits to the costs, that is just optional. So if you if it's really a big measure this makes sense or if you need it from from um, from some some regulations that you need to have these economic viability indicators, you can uh, include it in the assessment, but it's not necessary because the monetization is such a big um, issue and need a lots of time. And so um, these are the eight steps, and uh, now I will start to go through each of the steps. <clears throat> so the first step seems to be rather simple but uh, it's very important to describe the project and alternatives. So, um, for instance, um, you need to specify the measure and also the, the alternative. So here, the business as usual case. So um, I choose an example for this presentation, which is not a tight example, but um, it's uh, rather easy to understand. So if we have the example that a city has a quite old fleet of, of diesel buses and they need to buy new buses and they can either go again for diesel buses or maybe they saw in another city, oh, they have this fancy CNG buses and maybe that is a good option for us too. <clears throat> so um, the diesel buses would be the business as usual case. They need to invest, invest but um, it's just they continue with their usual activities. And so the CNG buses are the other options, and of course you can include additional ones like electric buses and so on. <clears throat> and then you have to specify how many buses will I buy, what is the lifetime, maybe the buses vary in capacity, maybe I need some additional infrastructure for the CNG bus buses. And so it's important to specify this in the first step to set the overall framework for the assessment. <clears throat> and um, it's also important to define the system boundaries. So where should I take the effects into account? For instance, if you implement some uh, traffic measures, it's important um, that you can have effects that are outside uh, the main area. And um, it's all also important to identify relevant stakeholders for the further process of the assessment. So um, then you come to step two, that is to identify effects and indicators to measure these effects. And um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have effects that can be quantified and we have qualitative effects. And sometimes it's not just depend on the ca characteristic of the effect, but also on the data availability. Because sometimes you might, in principle, you can measure something, but it needs a lot of effort to maybe model it or something like that. So you might decide to include it as a qualitative effect. <clears throat> and here's just an example. It's not a complete list, but um, that, that could be one of the results, that you um, cluster the effects. And um, for instance, here, um, 
noise effects are treated as a qualitative criteria because um, maybe the city decides, okay, we do not have the time to model the noise effects, but we want to include it and we will just look at it from a qualitative perspective. <clears throat> and then, of course, you have to assess the actual <coughs> impacts that you can expect from the measure. And um, so you have to determine the performance along the different indicators. And so for um, impacts that can be quantified, um, please look only in the red box. This is an example, for instance, for the emissions. Then you can really you can compare the emissions uh, for the diesel bus fleet or for the CNG bus fleet, and you end up with real numbers. And you can like look at that over the lifetime. So what is your assessment period? And you have clear number um, on the um, uh, nitrogen oxide emissions and so on. When you decide to do the cost-benefit aspect of it, as I mentioned, you need to monetize all these values. <clears throat> and so that is just the example. You had your emissions, which I showed before, and then uh, you have a price for the emissions. And um, the price is um, a big issue because um, you usually need um, some standard values. Um, for instance, in this um, example, we use standard values uh, provided by the HEATCO project, which was an European project that is a good source to get some standard values. But also you might have other national guidelines that you need to use. So it's also a lot of effort to get to the standard values. But when you complete all this, you end up with real prices for the emissions of the diesel or the CNG option. <coughs> And um, to assess the qualitative impacts, we decided to go for a scoring system. And um, for instance, on a, on a scale between minus 10, which would be the negative effects, and plus 10, the positive effects. And um, then you can consult experts within the municipality or external experts about um, what in which size is the potential effects, and also you can um, consult the literature and, of course, other cities that already implemented the measure. So if you, for instance, see, okay, um, this measure has had a strong effect um, in city A, it might have also a strong effect in our city. Mm. And then you can summarize all these effects in an impact summary table, which is one of the results. And so there you have all the numbers. And so it's, you can really communicate the results to decision makers and to stakeholders and to really show the advantages and the disadvantages in numbers and um, in the scores. Um, yeah, but that is only one of the results uh, because now we come to step number four. So you saw in the impact summary table that you have as units, you have euros, you have tons, you have this qualitative scores. So to allow really a comparison, um, you need to normalize all these effects. So all effects are translated to a unitless score um, using the maximum score approach. You can read later in the handbook. But like in this example, which is not really for the buses, but just to make it um, easy to understand, um, Within one categories, like when we look at the category revenue, the um, impact is translated to this normalized score, but the, the difference is still um, kept. Like um, for measure B, the normalized score of 10 is still twice the revenues of measure A. So um, you keep that during the normalization. <clears throat> And so now you have all your impact and you have a normalized score for all impacts. And then um, another option or another step is to weight your criteria. And that is important because you might have different priorities in your municipality. If your city suffers a lot from local air pollution, a reduction of local air pollution might be a top priority. So to reflect that, um, you can um, assign uh, weights among the different effect categories. And um, this is done in a hierarchical structure to make it very easy. 
So you start with the highest hierarchy <coughs> or cluster level. So it's just an easy example here, the, the 100 points were divided between direct economic effects, environmental effects and social effects. And then you go to the next level in the environmental sections and you have 20 points um, that you can again um, distribute among the lower categories. So here in this case, local air pollution receives 15 points and uh, CO2 emission receives five points. So that is the easy principle. <clears throat> so then we come to the overall results. When you combine the weights and the normalized scores, you can end up with an overall score. And um, that allows a ranking of different options. For instance, if you do not only include the CNG buses, but also a hybrid bus or an electric system, you have different scores for each option. And so you see easily which op option performs best. And you can also present uh, the effects in a graphical manner as it did here done here. So um, you can really see what, what kind of effects um, the measure performs good in and where not so good. And uh, you can communicate it to the decision makers. And um, I already showed you that uh, impact summary table. So um, that is another result. And um, again, the optional version to present economic indicators like benefit to cost ratios or net present values. I would, will not go into detail for that. Um, so um, you can do that also. Um, another step which is quite important, you end up with these results, but you had some assumptions during your assessment like um, about um, qualitative effects, the scores and the weights, and maybe the framework assumptions are also not so clear. For instance, you, the price of diesel might change over time and so on, so you can conduct a sensitivity an analysis to present the uncertainties. So to test the influence of non-robust assumptions, you just change the values and um, rerun the assessment with altered values. So then you have an indicator if it's very, your results are really very robust to these changes or not. And um, the next step, of which, are, which is more explained in detail in the handbook, is that you need to communicate the results in an appropriate manner. So often it is said that the assessment tools come up with a result which is presented and nobody knows how you came to the results. So it's really important to avoid this as the assessment is seen as a black box. And um, so we also recommend to present the different um, kind of results, like the impact summary table, the graphical representation, and the uh, overall score. Okay, so that's um, the method. And um, just a short summary about the last few minutes. The tight impact assessment methods can be applied to most of the tight measures. For some, it's not quite usable, um, but for most. And um, it really compares different options and can really support the decision-making process because you can, in advance, have an idea about the effects and um, communicate that. And um, it reflects different kind of effects, uh, which the ones that you can quantify and also qualitative effects. And um, as mentioned, the economic assessment can be integrated, which is an additional value, but needs some work. And um, the method can be easily adapted according to the assessment budget and the data available. And um, more details can be received from the tight impact assessment handbook, and that will be published on the website around March or April. So thank you, and I'm open for questions. Okay.